Do you talk too much in your sales conversations? What about when writing emails? What about when giving presentations? Do you use too many words? Let's talk about the benefit of being concise in this video. I believe that in sales, just as in professional speaking, it's important to be concise. What does that mean? Using less words to convey an accurate meaning in your communication. People appreciate conciseness. Buyers appreciate conciseness. Why? Because they're busy. They don't have time to listen to a salesperson go on and on and on about why they should buy. They actually want to spend less time making a decision and you can help by not talking too much. When opening a sales conversation, do you go on and on and on before finally stopping to listen to the prospect to see if you've even piqued their interest? Do they seem interested or do they seem bored or annoyed or irritated? You can tell through their expression, through their body language, or if you're cold calling someone on the phone, you can tell that they're trying to interrupt you to say something but you just keep going on because you have this scripted pitch that has you talking for 30 seconds before the person even gets a chance to say anything. Be really careful about that. You want to have nice, tight openings that get right to the point to intrigue the buyer to have a conversation with you. How about when trying to overcome an objection? Do you have a nice, clear statement to overcome the objection, hopefully diffuse it, and then move to the next part of the conversation? Or do you spend too much time overcoming their objection to the point where the buyer feels less convinced instead of more? When it's time for the buyer to make a decision, this is absolutely the wrong time to talk too much. You wanna be silent to let them make the decision. You've probably heard this before, but do you find yourself getting uncomfortable I remember when I interviewed Dr. Laura, our listening expert, and she said that people get nervous and want to fill the space after just two to three seconds of silence. Is that you? Don't let it be you. Let the buyer make a decision. They will say something, and that something is going to be very helpful to you to determine where you should go with this purchase decision. How about in your emails? Do you write emails that are so long that when the buyer opens the email, then they close it right away because they think, oh, I don't have time for this? Or are your emails so long that the prospect can't really figure out what's important in the email? I like to short, write short emails that get right to the point and ask for a decision. That's all. That's all that an email should do. If it's a follow-up email, it's a follow-up email that's, that provides whatever information they needed as a follow-up and then asks for a decision. If it's an informative email, it provides some information and then invites them to get more by clicking on a link, opening an attachment, scheduling a conversation, but you don't go on and on and on. Usually, three strong points can make your argument in an email. If you need more than three points that are compelling to your buyer, Maybe you don't have a good buyer or you don't have good points to make. How about leaving voicemails? If you even leave voicemails anymore, because a lot of people don't seem to want to check them. But if you leave a voicemail, it should only be probably 10, 15 seconds. After that, they'll probably hang up and not even listen to the rest of the voicemail. Can you say what you need to say in 10 or 15 seconds? You should. When giving presentations to buyers, are you turning a 20 minute presentation into a 30 minute presentation? because you didn't rehearse it well enough and you didn't work down the number of words that you can use to convey your most meaningful points? Are you leaving enough time to take all their questions or are you sucking up all that time because you're presenting too much? The conversation with the buyer, the Q&A, is probably just as valuable, if not more valuable, than your presentation. Don't squeeze that out. There's a famous quote from an American writer, Mark Twain, that goes like this. I didn't have time to write a short letter, so I wrote a long one instead. Hmm, is that you? If you had more time to give a shorter presentation because you worked on it, would you use it? If you had more time to write a tighter email 
Would you use it properly to make sure? If you had more time to craft your pitch, your objection handling, would you use it properly? It's important to be concise. You will be respected, appreciated, and probably your buyers will buy more and be more attentive in your sales conversations. Figure it out how to be more concise. If you'd like to learn more from me about how you can be a more successful salesperson, consider investing in my seven week online sales training program. Your results are guaranteed or you can ask for your money back. Try it and see how well it can help you. Also check out my website, buildandbalance.com, where I have a blog with lots of helpful sales posts, where you can learn about my coaching and training. If this video has been helpful, like it, share it, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in future videos.